Alrighty, folks, we're continuing Fork Week here on the channel, apparently, with Interesting as Fork, right after Black Magic Forkery. Uh, still brought to you by our sponsor for the week, me, represent.com slash store slash Captain Sparkles, because I look a lot like this Captain Sparkles guy, so he paid me to plug his merch store uh, this week and last week and all that stuff. So check it out, link in the description. Start off with number 19, Water Balloon Fence Slow-Mo. Is this a Slow-Mo Guys video? I must have missed this one. Oh my god, this is the most oddly satisfying thing ever. Oh my goodness, like a bunch of little mini balloons just emerged. Is it not gonna pop? Is it not gonna pop? Is it gonna retract through the fence? And then it's not gonna have popped? How did it do that? Would an absolute unit of a water balloon, or an absolute unit of water, one gram per cubic centimeter, incredible, is it not gonna break? Are these all not break? It's not breaking from being hit by a weed whacker? This thing chops weeds into smithereens and this balloon stays intact. Incredible. I need to know where these balloons are gotten from because I never want to use them in a water balloon fight. Or maybe I do because I just don't want to get wet. Oh, is this guy not gonna be able to pop the balloon by smashing it as hard as he possibly can with a boxing glove? Get oh, never mind, he is. I thought this balloon was gonna survive through everything that was thrown at it, but a punch was too much. Sorry, balloon. That was great, though. How the big bird costume worked. Bro, that's wild. Oh my god, can you- How would you operate a life-size puppet, larger than life-size puppet, while still reading off voice lines that you're acting out? And what the- And it's like one arm is- it's on a pulley, so one arm affects the other and they're kind of- opposite back and forth and then you're operating the eyes with your finger and then you're reading the freaking script i guess on the plus side you get to read the script right that's nice that's that's great you don't have to memorize your lines quite as much but you probably end up doing it anyway so you can be more natural with the puppetry movement and then the legs at least fairly straightforward dude that's insane and the string why is the string just taped to the pinky instead of the whole hand it's just the pinky why is it like that? Because you need to be able to reach the pinkies, like the highest point. Bro, I feel like the people who operate the puppets just don't get enough cred. Also, people at Disneyland who operate like the Star Wars outfits that have the voice lines that are recorded and like they operate it with finger movements. I probably mentioned this at some point in a video before, but it's like they have to memorize the finger combinations that trigger different voice lines. And, it's, and then to be able to hold a conversation with all the guests and it's wild, dude. Freaking give them some credit that they deserve. This baby snake would only eat live rats, so the owner improvised. <laughs> so easily fooled. <laughs> Snakes not known for their large brains, apparently. <laughs> wow, dude, this rat's moving towards me. Totally looks realistic. It, it doesn't... I don't, I'm not noticing the... the a metal race car of inorganic composition that's underneath the rat. The rat looks it looks very alive to me. Wow, incredible. Probably tastes the thing. It's like, wow, this is this is so much tastier than the unalived rat that I was trying to get fed earlier. Like, wow, that's so much more high quality rat because it wasn't previously unalived. So you stupid idiot can't even figure out the taste test. Okay, I'm not hating on snakes. Snakes are cool and stuff. But that this Bet this dude thinks this is like some high-class cuisine over the other snake when they're the same thing, okay? Do some accurate blind taste tests. Come on, snake. Uh, the Tamaskin is a dog breed that looks like a wolf but with zero wolf blood. It is a happy and friendly pet. No terriers were eaten in the making of this post. Isn't that not exactly true, though? Because dogs were domesticated from wolves in the very beginning. And so, technically, if you trace the ancestry of any dog, right, you're eventually going to get back to a wolf. Because there weren't just domesticated dogs. Like, the dog in the foreground there, that terrier, was, wasn't just, like, roaming around in the wilderness, and then some human was like, Oh, look at this! Looks like a good companion for hunting. I'm gonna take it and make it my own. And thousands of years ago, it's like, no, they were, they were bred by humans from wolves. And so maybe it's just that this dog isn't super closely related to wolves. It's not like a few generations ago, the parents were wolves. It's further back than that, but it just looks like a wolf. So maybe it's, I don't know. But anyway, I'm pretty sure all dogs trace back to wolves. I guess it could be wrong. I'm not an expert on dog ancestry, but I think that's the case. But that, that looks like an absolute unit. 
and um, yeah, cute terrier in the foreground too. Stab proof vest demo at the International Security Expo in London. Okay, this this looks like I, I'm this looks like a baseball bat and not a. I'm gonna be honest, doesn't look like he's going at that at full force. I feel like. I feel like a baseball bat hitting you at full force is probably gonna hurt no matter what sort of vest you're wearing. But I could be wrong at the same time, but I came here for knives, okay? High performance body armor, PPSS, personal protective safety super. He looks way too nervous. Why would you just agree to demo this? Why would you have this guy in a suit who is not wearing the body armor being like, hey, you wanna come over here and have me come at you with a knife? I'd be like, I'm good, but you can do it. Dude's, dude in the suit's probably got it like woven into the suit or something, that's what I wanna see. I wanna see him taking a bat or a knife with just the thin suit, which I'm sure probably exists at this point or is being developed so you can like sneak in crazy body armor into wearable clothing or something. I'd be, that'd be gnarly actually. I'd be interested in checking that out. This wonderful double floor glass corner on this modern stone house. From the thumbnail, it looks like Minecraft. <laughs> it does, mo that, it doesn't look like a modern house, but it looks, I mean, that corner looks modern. It looks like a traditional house giving birth to a modern house. It's a very rare occurrence to see in nature. You don't capture it often, but when you do, you must be very quiet as you witness the home giving birth to its modern child. But I wouldn't call this a modern home, I would just call it a house giving birth. Also Minecraft. Gorilla Paw with Vitiligo. That, oh my god, it looks like a human. It looks like my, my stubby finger. <laughs> that is crazy though, dude. I didn't realize that gorillas just had nails that looked like that. Bro, it looks like my pinky finger if it was just slightly more stubby, you know? I have stubby finger, they're not quite that stubby. Vitiligo, though, is uh, it, it removes pigments, I believe, from um, certain patches of, of skin. And uh, I guess that's what's going on here. And I, I didn't know that gorillas could have it, too. But that is... That's, dude, that's so wild. Anyway, okay. Today's global temperature map, Australia is on fire. Yeah, is that... Okay, so is Australia... Is, is that actually being caused by the fires? Because I know there are really bad fires that are going on in Australia. And if you live in Australia, I hope that you're okay. I don't know a great deal because admittedly there hasn't been a great deal of coverage that I've seen um, in news media and on Twitter and all that stuff. Uh, or is it just that it's really, really hot and it's really hot and therefore that is what's certainly assisting the fires and happening and spreading. That looks very toasty though. It says 24 Celsius in Sydney, Melbourne, 43. That's hot. That's very hot. Oh my, can you imagine if the power goes out because too many people are using their air conditioning and you were stuck at 43? Oh my goodness, dude. I guess at that point you just find a place to get in the water and you just kind of stay there. Oh man. When you stand at the geographic south pole, all lines of longitude converge at that exact point. So you're literally standing in 24 time zones. You can step from today into yesterday and from yesterday back into tomorrow time travel. Dude, you know what? I hadn't thought about that. Like, what do you, what time does the South Pole go by? Do you just choose wherever you want? Do you, and then, and then, yeah, that's, there's, there's only, there is no East, West, or South. There is only, no, every direction that you travel in is North until you start walking around in a circle. Oh man. This is, now I'm just like, my brain is gonna go, I, I, we, we need to stop the video here so I can just like think about all the implications of this. <laughs> What time is it at the South Pole? Any time you want it to be. Springbok antelope in slow motion. <laughs> what ha you know, what happens here is that these animals, they don't, they don't sleep like you or I do, okay? What they do is actually they are sleeping for the majority of the time that they are moving but it's really clever. They have a system that wakes them up as soon as they're about to land, and then they're awake for that millisecond when they need to spring forward, and then they quickly fall back asleep in the air, and then it's like their body has a G-force sensor, knows they're about to land. Oh, wake up, jump again. Oh, sleeping time. It means that while they're traveling, dude, they're sleeping for at least like 80% of that travel time. 
can you imagine dude they, they're like traveling for two hours and of that dude 80 percent of the two hours taking a nap it's crazy crazy adaptation evolution amazing in 1982 agnes dennis cultivated grew and harvested a two acre wheat field in downtown manhattan did did she did she own this because if she owned that that is a very valuable piece of land very 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 valuable each of those wheat probably exists on like each each plot of where that wheat exists probably like a thousand bucks thousand bucks worth of soil real estate for every single one of those wheat that popping out of the ground freaking manhattan prices i can't imagine just a plot of land in manhattan devoted to to wheat agriculture when galaxies collide simulation pauses to show real images from hubble I want to see the Hubble images. Oh, bro. Wait, how quickly does this happen, though? Is it has it actually evolved from? What the heck? This is actually happening within our lifetimes. OK, that's that's actually pretty gnarly. What? Where did all the there's got to still be like at the end of the day, like there's so much empty space, though, that I bet there are there are very few actual collisions that are probably going on here. It's just like all of the matter is is kind of being reconfigured as to how it's orbiting the black holes in the center, presumably. But like, I bet there is actually, can, like if the Milky Way collided with another galaxy, our day-to-day -day life would probably not be impacted because like, it's just, there's so much nothingness out there that I bet most likely, obviously you can't guarantee it, most likely nothing would, like, actually get in our way. But from a, an external, very far away vantage point, it'd be like, what the heck is going on over there? That's insane. But really, if there's any life in there, they're probably just chilling, going about their day. They're like, I don't notice anything going on. Oh, we just joined another galaxy? That's cool. I had no idea. For those who didn't know, this is how pineapples grow. Wait, this is very topical. I feel like over on uh, the live stream at twitch.tv slash Captain Sparkles and youtube.com slash Captain Sparkles 2, Zine and I were just talking about pineapples growing. And I, I don't like, wait, was it because of this post? Or, but yeah, no, this is this. I knew that pineapples. I already knew this, dude. I'm a pineapple hipster. I knew what pineapple bushes look like, that they're a bunch of spiky looking leaves and then a pineapple just happens on top of it. And then the pineapple has like a miniature version of the spiky leaf bush on top of it. And then it's just unfortunate that we don't get another pineapple that grows out of the top of the spiky leaves on the first pineapple and then it just fractals forever. That'd be pretty cool, but it doesn't do that. But little do you know, there's actually a gigantic pineapple that's under the ground. Um, little known fact, if you excavated that, you would get absolute units of pineapple. But it's like, they're legally protected. They're like an endangered species. You're not allowed to harvest them like that. Only the top pineapples. Group of students learning the strength of a proper shield wall. I mean, I feel like if you have like 20 people and then you have you know, two people on the other side, even if the 20 people are kids, you're probably gonna have a hard time pushing through them. I feel like if you if you had the exact correlating amount of mass on the opposite side of the wall, then, I don't know, you probably, you probably, they'd push over. That's just what I'm thinking here. I'm thinking it's just a, a mass inequality problem. Basically what we have here is 300, but they're just low efforting it because they, didn't go and bother to get 300 people so they could do a turtle shell of shields, which would have been the real cool way to go here, but you know, whatever. How to solve a pig pen cipher. Okay, first you draw a tic-tac-toe board, then you don't play, know how to play tic-tac-toe, so you draw circles and everything, and then you go A, B, C, D, G, and, and that stuff, and then, oh, I, I see, so every, Every one of those things just corresponds to another. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, it's, that's a thing. A 2000 year old green serpentine mask found at the base of a pyramid in Mexico. All right, let's, let's take a wild guess. If I control F, Jojo, how many results will be found here in this one? Let's see, control F. Apparently the last thing I searched for was spark for sparkles or something. Jojo, 29. 
Okay, it's actually less than I expected. Decent amount of JoJo here. Yeah, hopefully nobody puts it on, otherwise uh, bad things might befall the entire planet. Be careful, everybody. Be very, very careful. From day to night, today the protest in Hong Kong marks its half-year anniversary. Over 800,000 people took to the streets today, which is about 11% of the population. That's a lot of people. I feel God, you may if 11% of the U.S. population took to the streets over something, that'd be like 30 million people. Except it probably even wouldn't look this dense because Hong Kong is so small. And so 800,000 people in something the size of Hong Kong would be wild. Anyway, best of luck, peoples in Hong Kong. The top for the last month of Interesting is Four. Sinkhole opened in a Cornish backyard leading 300 feet down into a medieval mine shaft. So what do you do at that point? With, with your house. <laughs> uh, so can we live here anymore? Like, is that it? Is our house now an archaeological site? Like, does the government buy us out? Is insurance like, sorry, we don't cover medieval mineshaft accidents. Um, you're out of luck on that one. It's like, okay, cool. So we're just, we're just out of luck. We just have to hope that a university wants to buy our house from us in order to take advantage of the medieval mineshaft that nobody bothered to research before they dug out our freaking foundation. This is why we have records of things. Uh, although I guess medieval times were probably before records were taken, but still, that's... Man. You know, it could have been worse. Could have been, like, under your actual house rather than in the backyard, so... Thank goodness for that, at the very least, that you weren't just sleeping and all of a sudden your bed fell down 300 feet into a medieval mine shaft. Because... What do you, what do you, like, what, can you imagine, like, at that point, someone would just, like, not show up for work, as if they lived alone, they'd just, like, disappear, and then eventually, something, like, someone, the police would end up finally making their way into the person's house, and be like, what the hell happened? Like, you, my partner's not gonna believe this one, oh my god, that's, that's a world first, so thank goodness that didn't happen. Alright, that's it for the last month of Interesting as Fork. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Make sure to like if you liked. Check out the playlist if you want to catch more interesting as forks. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And that's it. Um, I'll catch you next time. Peace out. Oh, happy, happy 2020. God, I didn't even say that at the beginning of the video. What am I doing? Happy New Year. Happy New Decade. Peace out.